Good morning. I'm Anna Tai. I'm a registered dietitian and board certified specialist in pediatric nutrition with a focus on functional medicine. I help kids with ADHD achieve their food potential naturally without medications. And today I want to talk about the causes of angry outbursts and meltdowns in children with ADHD and the four steps to help do with it naturally. I used to feel like I'm walking on eggshells or landmine fields around my daughter. I would take my time to compose the sentence before I open my mouth because if I say the wrong thing or she interpreted it the wrong way, she'll flip out and fly off the handle. She'll lash out on at the little smallest thing like me asking her to get ready for bed or stopping at the grocery store on the way home or she'll even flip out if she noticed that I use a different kind of oil in her noodles. So every day is different. Some days she's super nice like mommy I love you. Then few hours later all of a sudden the devil will come out. It's like Dr. Jekyll and Mrs. Hyde like constantly. And I used to joke that she has bipolar disorder but I don't think so. So does ADHD cause aggression or anger outburst? And we're going to talk about that. The primary symptoms of ADHD are hyperactivity, lack of focus, and poor memory. And most kids would also have other emotional symptoms such as anger outburst, emotional meltdowns, aggression, agitation, etc, etc. So coincidence? I don't think so. If you've been following me or read my book, Eat to Focus, it all comes back to the brain delay and defect in the ADHD brain. The ADHD brain, the ADHD brain is on average two to three years behind. So your six years old is actually acting emotionally at a three year old level. Also, the ADHD brain does not process glucose or sugar properly like the normal brain does. The normal human brain relies heavily on sugar or glucose as the main source of energy. So when your kid's diet are, is full of processed anti, empty calories of the so-called healthy snacks like fruit snacks, goldfish crackers, granola bars, Cheerios, their brain are stuck with no fuel. So now you basically have a starving three-year-old brain so what would you expect when you tell this three-year-old starving brain that he or she cannot have candy before bed? You got the idea? The other issue is what I call the gut feeling. Even though conventional ADHD treatment often focus on treating what's happening inside the brain, but most of the aggressive and explosive behaviors seems to stem from the gut. In recent years, actually, scientists have discovered the connection between the gut bacteria and a lot of the psychiatric and neurodevelopmental disorders such as autism spectrum disorders, ADHD, depression, anorexia nervosa, and even Rett syndrome. They found that the brain chemical imbalances might actually start in the gut and causing these more aggressive and explosive type of behaviors often seen in ADHD. What scientists also learned was that the gut is actually talking to the big brain constantly, the big brain up here, the central nervous system that includes your brain and your spinal cord. So the gut and the big brain up here is actually talking continuously all the time through the hormonal, immuno, and also the nervous system. And even though the gut or the bacteria in our gut seems like they're not doing anything in our gut, they're actually paying rent in the form of making precursors for, for things that our brain can use to make um, brain chemicals, things like dopamine, noradrenaline, and serotonin, and these chemicals help to calm the ADHD brain. Scientists also learned that the learn more about how the gut and brain connections and concluded that the gut actually could be our second brain. So we don't have just one brain, we do have two brains. So 
Does your ADHD child suffer from things like stomach pain, bed wetting, fecal incontinence, diarrhea, loose stool, or constipation? Does your ADHD child also have things like food allergies or intolerance, asthma, ear infection, and unexplained, unexplained skin rash? Or does your child crave things like sugar, cheese, milk, bread, noodles, cookies, crackers, or any kind of carbs. Chances are all these symptoms are related and can all be traced back to the gut imbalance. Digestion issues are very common in kids with ADHD, things like constipation, diarrhea, bed wetting, fecal incontinence. Actually, there's a study that looked at 700,000 children and they found that kids with ADHD are three times more likely to have chronic constipation and six times more likely to have fecal incontinence than children without ADHD. Also, frequent and recurrent antibiotic use for ear infection actually destroy good gut bacteria, which is one of the causes of hyperactivity, anger, irritability, mood swings, poor memory, poor attention span, sleep problem, and other inappropriate behaviors. And children with ADHD are also more likely to have allergy disorders, things like food allergies, asthma, and atopic dermatitis or eczema. In fact, 75% of the body's immunity is actually inside the gut. The gut is actually the residence of a thousand different species of bacteria that is known as the gut microbiome and each individual person have their own bacterial makeup in the guts, kind of like a fingerprint. So actually that's a pretty big deal. And, and these are the reasons why I always say that there's no one single ADHD treatment that works because no one supplement or no one diet actually works to correct all of these. A truly successful ADHD treatment actually involves multiple steps that address each of these underlying costs. And we're going to talk about the four steps that can help stop or minimize the anger outbursts in kids with ADHD. I'm not a parenting expert, but I'll mainly focus on the biochemical side since we now know that there's the gut and the brain origin of the anger outburst. So first of all, it's very important is you need to remain calm yourself. Like I've been through all this many, many times. I used to be so angry because my child would get upset out of like little tiny little things and I can't stand that. But what I've learned is you can't fight fire with fire. And you need to give your child space and also yourself space to breathe. And also letting him or her know that you're listening, you're there for him or her. And most of all, making sure that they're safe, they're not hurting themselves, and they're not hurting other people. And making sure that they know their boundaries and their consequences. They don't get what they want by screaming, yelling, destroying things. They will have responsibility. They'll be responsible for their actions, what they damage, what they destroy. They'll have to clean up the mess and they'll have privilege taken away. That's that's the consequence and they need to learn that and the other thing very important that I think is treating them the way that you want to be treated so with respect and compassion remember a lot of times when they get angry it is out of the control no one wants to be angry you know that you've been there you were angry and you know you don't like that feeling I don't like the feeling of being angry but you need to give them time to learn that and doing some of these four steps will help help to make the situation better. So let's start talking about four steps. So these are four steps that can help stop or minimize anger outbursts in kids with ADHD. So step one, you start out clean and eliminate all the trouble foods and artificial additives that can interfere with brain chemicals. And then the second steps, you're gonna feed the ADHD brain with food that the body recognizes and can use to fuel the brain and helps to make brain more brain more calming brain chemicals. 
And then number three is to feed the ADHD gut so you can correct the overwhelming gut-brain connection. And step four is you're going to do some brain reboot or activities that will help create new brain wiring so that the brain can now function more normally with the correct pathways. These four steps from the book Eat to Focus will help you, will provide you with a roadmap to, from start to finish to get your child to calm down and focus naturally without medications. I helped my crazy wild child who couldn't read or write when she was little with these same four steps I laid out in the book, Eat to Focus. She's now a merit scholarship student studying pre-med in Loyola Chicago University. So the Eat to Focus program actually combines my 18 years of professional experiences and ongoing up-to-date science and research of what works and what not for kids with ADHD. Literally, this is 10,000 hours of my sweat and tears and thousands of dollars spent consolidated into this simple to follow guide that you can start right away. And also this Eat to Focus program will help your child have more calm days at school and at home, excel in school, make lots of friends who love to be around them. And inside the book, you'll learn how to feed your child the right kind of food so he or she can calm down and focus and also what kind of daily routine and physical activities to help reward the brain connections for long lasting calm and focus because you don't want to just have them focus for a couple of hours and then that's about it. You'll also learn how, how to help your child and your family to transition to make these changes to get the best results that everyone deserves. So basically this book will save you a, a lot of years and thousands of money doing your own research and experiment. I've seen parents keep doing research, keep reading everything, but years later they're still doing the same thing. So don't wait that much longer. You can get a copy of my book Eat to Focus at Amazon.com. So I hope you find this information helpful. Let me know what you think and comment below. And if you have any other topics or ideas that you want to, to learn more about, drop me a link and then I'll do some research for you or I might have a blog post already there. So, but anyway, I also want you to remember that ADHD does not doom your child to a life of underachievement. You know your child is bright, full of potential, and deserve the best. In fact, many of the world's greatest discovery and inventions were made by people with ADHD. So stay strong and keep believing in your child, okay? Bye, thanks for listening or watching today and I'll see you again tomorrow.